This video is sponsored by Filegear, the world's fastest photo, music, video and document organiser. And you can get 10% off your order using the code NGFEEDBACK. Hello, so as you may be able to tell, probably can, I'm in the garden. And the reason why is because there's a bunch of construction work going on inside, which makes it too loud to film. I hope you appreciate the level of commitment. So anyway, here's what I've been up to for the last a bit over a week. So I guess the first thing is where we left off in the last video, which is the new camera which I got, which was a Diana Instant Square. This camera is a remake of the kind of classic Diana camera. It's the t tried and tested, lovely plastic camera, similar to a Holger. And what Lomography have done is remake it into a square Instax camera, which I think they've done a pretty good job with. It feels really nice. One of the things I really love about it is how modular it is. So there's a bunch of different lenses, you can add a flash on, you can do all these things, and you also have a lot of control over the settings. You can choose whether it's an automatic or bulb shutter, but you also have like five different aperture settings, which is pretty rare for an Instax camera. So shooting a fisheye on an Instax square, you can't normally do that, and it's pretty fun. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever going to take many serious photos with a camera like this, but it's just like a great fun thing you could have to take a few photos of your friends. Also, being able to put your own strobe on top of it is pretty cool. It didn't feel the most sturdy or safe, but being able to put like a regular flash gun on an insects camera, that's really cool and uh, something which I'd love to play around with in the future. The only problems that I was having with the camera is because you can set the aperture yourself, sometimes you get it wrong and sometimes it is nice to have that kind of automatic backup settings. But on the flip side, in some situations it's way nicer to be able to control it and also be able to focus on everything like that. And one other thing, it just seemed like the chemicals weren't being spread perfectly by the rollers, which uh, maybe it was just this camera in particular, but the end results didn't look bad, it was just something that I noticed. This week I actually went to two exhibitions, which uh, I took a bit of footage of. The first one was at Huxley Parlour, which was formerly known as Beatles and Huxley, which is just off Piccadilly Circus in London. They had this great joint show on by Miles Aldridge and Todd Heido, which is this lovely kind of collection of cinematic images. A mixture between portraiture from Miles and the suburban night photos by Todd Heido, which he's really well known for. And uh, it was just great being able to see them on such a large scale in all their glory. And they did pair up really nicely together. It's a great gallery, they always have something interesting on. I think it might even be over now, but it, it's worth checking out this gallery whenever you're in the area. So the second exhibition I went to see actually wasn't photography. And I think that's something which is quite important, to ingest art from all mediums. You can take a lot of influence from other things, so in this case, paintings. There's still a lot you can learn from like colour theory, and compositions and just ingesting stuff which you can then be inspired by in different ways. So this exhibition was by my friend Jordi. I'm not going to try and pronounce his surname. He's from the Netherlands and he's an amazing painter. This was all about these kind of still lives that he's painted about farms. It was his first solo show in London which was really cool to go down and see. I actually met him earlier this year when I was teaching in Portugal. We were doing the same thing as each other. Yeah it was just really cool to see and uh, one thing which I really loved, which is a similar theme to the last video I did, the painted frames. They seem to be a re reoccurring theme. He does them in a slightly different way, and they look great. So, uh, yeah, this is still on, if you get the chance to go and see it. It's in East London. So as I said earlier, this video is sponsored by Filegear. So last week I actually received my unit from Filegear, and I got to have a good play with it, so I could dish out my opinions and thoughts in this video. So basically, it's a physical unit which you plug into your internet at home, which then creates your own personal cloud network. So then you can go on to store whatever you like there, and access it from anywhere you want. It's also really expandable, which is one of the really cool things. You can plug in a bunch of different things, and increase the storage. You can either plug things in permanently, or plug them in just to be read off in the meantime. And all of that just seems really cool. It's nice and modular and kind of future-proof. And since it's all on your actual network, the transfer speeds are so much faster, which is really, really great. And actually, one of the coolest things to me is the fact that you can then go on to access your files wherever you are. Now, the unit stays plugged in at home, but if you're on your phone in the middle of nowhere and you forgot that you needed a file, you can get it. And this, to me, is pretty exciting. I travel quite a lot. Having no excuse now, to not have my photos backed up, to not have videos when I need them to access. This is amazing. And one of the other things that's cool to me is that it's built by a team of photographers, which just seems 
like the right kind of people that I'd want in charge of something like this. And they're a really small team and they're constantly working on the product and bringing updates. So I kind of see it as like something that's going to grow over time. Not an investment, but something that it'll just be cool to follow along the journey. They sponsored this video, but I'm definitely going to continue using this product. It's really cool. So the other day, uh, we were filming an episode of Taste Buds, my new food channel with my friend Aslan. We were cooking this steak in a sous vide, and if you don't know what that is, it's like this big bath, I guess, that you put a piece of meat in, in a vacuum sealed bag, and you cook it. And the water is like circulated up to a temperature. We needed to test our vacuum sealing machine to see if it was working, so we were having a few problems. And for some reason, Aslan pulled out this pack of Instax film, because it just seemed to be like the right size. So we decided to do a little experiment, and uh, cook the Instax to medium rare. Yeah, we cooked it at 55 degrees for like an hour. We realized we didn't have a uh, Instax mini camera, so I actually had to bring it back home and reheat it. And uh, I was just interested to see whether this would have any impact on like the colors and the chemicals or whether it would like completely ruin the film or whether it wouldn't do anything at all. So I went out and took some photos with the cooked medium rare Instax on this Lomo wide, which is really, really wide. It's like 20 mil. I wasn't too impressed with the results. They just looked a bit cool, and I thought, if anything, they were gonna look warm. So I'm not sure if the experiment was a complete success, but it's made me excited to try something again in the future. I've never really been interested in like film experiments, but now, I don't know. It just seems like a fun thing, which I haven't tried before. However, if you would like to see the, the good thing which we cooked, which was the steak, you can check that out in the, in the description. It was really good. I also got some new photo books which I thought were worth sharing with you. So the first book is Slash and Burn by Terj Absudal. This is by far the best design book that I've bought in quite a long time. Everything is incredibly well made and thought out. The work itself is about the forest fins which takes place in a large forest belt along the Norwegian and Swedish border, where Finnish farmers settled in the early 1600s. The Finnish farmers used an old method of producing crops called the slash and burn, which is where the book gets its title. It's all about questioning the identity of the people who currently reside in the forest belt, and looking into the mythology and shamanistic ways that the forest fins were associated with. Aside from the images being great, the layout is also amazing with great use of archival images, and the book itself is just so well made. There's a really nice outer cover which is separately bound to the book, and there's also a separate booklet inside, so it's just really premium and well thought out. You can check out some of the images which are in it on his website, and also order the book if you're interested. So the second book is Small Town Inertia by Jim Mortram. And this, to me, is by far the most important book of British photography to come out this year. The images take place around Jim's local area in small towns in Norfolk, and depict harsh realities and struggles that people are facing due to welfare cuts and the fall of the health services. There's a lot of incredibly powerful images which handle difficult subjects incredibly well, and Jim has done all of this so sensitively. The images were made over the course of seven years and contains little descriptions and quotes of the subjects. It's really rare to see such dedication to one topic and for it to be depicted so thoroughly. So yeah, it's just really great work. And uh, it's also quite affordable. I think it's only 25 pounds for the paperback version. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon and it's definitely worth checking out. So photo conversation, the next installment. Which image did I pick to pair with the lovely image from the last episode? I went with this one from Instagram user Plain Donuts. I kind of hate myself for picking this one because conceptually it's so similar to the last image. But it's just really nice and I thought it it does go well. So it's a bit tricky for me because it is very similar but I think it's really nicely done. So uh, this is the next image which I would like you to continue on with. However, there is definitely a ban from anyone laying down as a portrait. I'm not gonna pick that, so please don't submit it. So yeah, think about the leading lines or the colors, and yeah, go wild, upload your photos with the hashtag NFConversation, and maybe you'll be picked for the next one. So uh, thanks for watching, bye.